Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you on this uh, Daily Hindu Knowledge video in the morning. These videos come in the evening, the MCQ lessons they come. And uh, today I'm gonna uh, uh, announce one thing that uh, in the evening lesson which uh, this uh, MCQs are there, there I will add two main questions because in the morning I do not get much time and I want to make those uh, questions very importantly and uh, uh, those will be based on these uh, uh, articles which are coming on daily basis which we discuss daily and uh, regarding their uh, their scrutiny regarding their essence uh, i will make those questions so that uh, in the mains this thing will be very much uh, beneficial to you people so please attend evening lesson and i will add these two questions there and we will discuss those things pocket news app is training on google play you can download that and please follow both the lessons morning and evening and uh, regarding these courses the description is given below the video you can call on these numbers and uh, the visit the website also the chat section is available there and here uh, you can get pdf and the telegram channel you will also find there so on both the sources you will get the pdf use telegram it's a very useful source for upsa preparation and other exams preparation also because many channels are created there so that's important on instagram also you can follow me first article important for gs paper 2 it is talking about the changing situation and uh, uh, how things take a turn here muhammad ayub is explaining the situation where Trump's administration they are having some problems and uh, they are changing some things John Bolton was sacked recently by Trump and uh, many differences erupted between uh, two because uh, John Bolton was a hardliner and uh, he made all these plans strategies and, and all regarding the Iran issue and he said that we will not stop before the total denuclearization of Iran country but you see, uh, the, there are uh, different facts like like uh, Iran was complying with the jackpot deal, but uh, America unilaterally withdrew from that, putting many many allegations, and after that, many many things uh, were pro very much provocative. But now, a stage has come where elections will be there next year. Trump has to be very much aware about those situations, and Trump is not in a favor of a, a, a full-fledged war situation with Iran another war nobody wants there in that west asia region neither america nor the european countries so trump is saving the situation here he sacked john bolton there and uh, 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 some softening is happening in this matter there you see it all started with the provocation of uh, north korea then the afghanistan situation became so huge then the syria situation then again the afghanistan situation and then this iran situation is the next issue now see three years are gone uh, since uh, trump was uh, elected and in these three years these issues were extremely huge and you see country was uh, uh, in a way discussing these issues and uh, uh, many many debates were going on and what were the what was the conclusion conclusion was that things escalated then again the the calm down situation that was there in front of us and uh, uh, when uh, they even said that we will annihilate a country called North Korea from the world map and then a stage comes where Trump becomes the first president who steps on the North Korean land so these kind of things are extremely dramatic and uh, it looks like those are more election oriented issues and uh, 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 other things are in a way hidden behind these very extremely sensitive agendas so nothing happened out of the north korea situation the total denuclearization that didn't happen although some good things happened and uh, today we have some positive developments uh, uh, regarding the korean situation but uh, you cannot say that whatever was announced expected and said those all things were fulfilled in the syria situation it's all a stuck deal america and uh, turkey they came uh, directly in, in a kind of a confrontation there a lot of uh, 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 comments and all those were passed against each other and now the Afghanistan situation is also out of out of their hands Taliban is a way more confident now and a group where against a group you start a war you continue the war for 18 years and then that group the small group threatens a country today in the, the Hindu newspaper the news is there that uh, Taliban is saying that uh, Trump administration has to understand whom they are fighting fighting with and uh, we are very dangerous so 
these kind of things if taliban is saying that means situations are out of the hands of americans so they have to go with a lot of caution and a lot of uh, observation there now in this iran situation which is the last one in the series we had a lot of provocation happened uh, boris johnson and uk they also came with the uh, trump's uh, motives and uh, his announcement there and uh, the uk bearing a flag bearing ship was also captured there by iranis and all and a lot of provocation was there but other european countries they were not on the same page where trump and boris johnson was boris johnson were so these things show a kind of a divided opinion there the instex means uh, the mechanism that these uh, france or germany these countries uh, devised there to uh, 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 find a new way other than the american dollar payment systems so they wanted to continue things with iran and even they said that some sanctions are totally unjustified and some things are totally unnecessary and this unilateral move by america is uh, not productive at all so a lot of differences are there means trump is not getting a lot of confidence over the iran issue now israel and iran we know it's a unique situation iran says israel is not a country according to us and it is all the installment of uh, uh, america in the arabian world and it it's all a huge problem for iran always so israel and iran they are staunch enemies of each other israel wanted that america attacks iran as early as possible and the regime change and whatever uh, uh, plan was there that must be executed but now that thing is not going to be possible because uh, uh, when in the starting they said that we we may go for a regime change in iran and bolton said that uh, military confrontation can be there very soon so israel was very much elated at that time but now when america softens its stand then israel has some problems over that you see american president has to uh, clarify now that uh, that the israeli prime minister will not tell us what we are going to decide whom we are going to meet and who whom we are not going to meet so these kind of rifts are visible between us and israel also means uh, uh, you can never imagine these kind of things these kind of differences between israel and us but iran is so sensitive issue for israel so this is going on and uh, here the writer mohammed ayub says that uh, us iran detente could be on the cards okay exit of john bolton israel's diminished influence on washington these things are connected and they signal a possible reduction in the tensions there so that's a good thing for the world but not a good thing for john bolton and israel there as i told you elections are the main reason you see all escalations were there and uh, all praises war mongering were there was there but you see things are different there in america it is not like india where uh, on media main mainstream media houses uh, they are fooling people and any kind of uh, uh, explanation is going on any kind of uh, analysis is going on any kind of uh, escalation war mongering anything is going on and the uh, uh, poor people the simple simple people of this country they believe everything there but in america the accountability is huge and the president during the election time he has to go between the people and he talks over the issues there it is not like uh, uh, this country where only man ki baats are there and uh, uh, the the politicians are standing 100 meters away from the crowd and they are saying anything and they just go and there is no two way communication it is not like that in america so that's why the accountability is huge and the pressure is huge on uh, uh, mr trump so next years next year there are going to be elections and uh, the final and the second term can be there for trump so for that trump wants to secure the situations and trump is fundamentally averse to leading the us into an open ended war that thing was clear because in the first uh, election campaign he said that america will limit all its uh, extra expenditures and these wars we do not want we want to focus on america america first is the goal and the business uh, uh, we will focus on so that was the announcement and based on that he got votes but the withdrawal could not happen uh, very soon and things became very much complicated whether we talk about syria whether we talk about uh, afghanistan situation so things were not on expected lines now if trump decides to attack iran then it may be a huge problem for america and uh, the elections and the people's votes so trump is not going to uh, take this much huge risk that's why john bolton was sacked and uh, who was taking this hard line and uh, uh, he was provo- provoking iran a lot and a lot of countries 
they were also not ready for these kind of things so that's why a lot of criticism trump administration got there internationally so that's why trump abhors the idea of sending more troops to the volatile west asian region so that's why some changes are there and trump wants to show that uh, uh, he is a better and the best strategist and uh, he has this uh, reputation internationally that we can shape afresh the contours of american foreign policy so these things he would want to show in american election because in america the foreign policy is a very important issue in uh, general elections there president's election there so that's uh, really huge and all these things were based on uh, this uh, uh, iranian uh, foreign minister mohammad zawed zarif to biarritz where this g7 summit was concluded here they say that this summit was not a great success and uh, unexpectedly in biarritz mohammad zawed zarif was invited by emmanuel macron and there some uh, de-escalation happened uh, uh, in these talks because america and iran both are now saying that uh, there is no problem in meeting together and uh, coming on a table there but uh, mr rouhani the president of uh, iran he said that uh, if these sanctions are lifted then we are very much ready to talk with mr trump even trump said that there is no problem with me and uh, it could happen and we have to see so softening of the issues that we are observing here and israel and john bolton have been the two major obstacles to a direct encounter between these two leaders so that thing can be possible now because uh, these two are sidelined john bolton is sacked and uh, regarding israel mr trump said that uh, it is not iranian sorry israeli prime minister would tell us that what we are going to decide whom we are going to meet and where we are going to meet so the rapprochement can be a possibility now and both leaders said that uh, uh, by the end of uh, september month they both can meet so you see there is a important learning learning here means the leaders and the countries and their governments and all internationally they can go for any kind of announcement any kind of uh, war mongering can be there any kind of uh, uh, a huge sensitive patriotic sentiments can be raised in countries just to get the election benefits there but the country has to be very much aware very much uh, be uh, sensitive about these issues and they must fix the accountability in the important issues like the jobs economy and the uh, progress uh, the developmental aspects they should never forget these things when these uh, emotions are raised war mongerings uh, uh, is going uh, war mongerings are going on in countries but they should not forget those core issues because when these emotions are raised people are blindfolded and they uh, do not discuss the crucial issues and uh, these things are very tough to handle and it is not very easy to start a war against any country today and the countries are very much capable nuclear capabilities are there so it is not a possible solution to go into a war so that's why situations change and uh, with a simple tweet uh, the leaders they change the uh, trajectory of the ongoing situation and uh, things come back to the normal what happened in the korean situation what happened in uh, uh, the afghanistan situation we all are observing still some things are unclear but you see the conclusion is that wars are not happening but the war mongering is and due to the war mongering the core issues are uh, in a way sidelined in countries and people are confused sometimes they are emotionally provoked sometimes uh, uh, they are supporting heavily the government and sometimes they are uh, 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 just stuck with these uh, uh, everyday problems so the next article talks about a simple problem problem here it is the issue of ongoing fines the heavy fines first thing that is important when mr nitin nitin gadkari said that we want to save people's lives then if they are sincere about saving people's lives then fill all the potholes on all the roads and especially on the national highways there are uh, uh, one feet deep uh, pit holes even on the national highways on the major highways and i am uh, the the testimony of that situation because practically i had that encounter when on nh8 when i when i was driving then i paid a toll tax there multiple times and still on the road it was not a ideal road and a lot of disturbances were there pit holes were there and they can lead to any kind of accidents 
so there are no announcements there are no policies there are no uh, 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 great implementations on those things but they raise the fine and with a un uh, 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 imaginable passion they collect these fines means if they would have been sincere then earlier the fine was not nil some fine was there and even the 500 rupees 1000 rupees 2000 rupees they are also a uh, uh, huge sum for normal public so if they were uh, passionate before and they would have implemented those things in the similar way as they are implementing then the country would have been very much disciplined by this time but today they raise these uh, 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 fines suddenly and they passionately are behind the people and they are collecting these fines in uh, thousands of crores of rupees amount then it raises many many questions means it is certainly not the uh, case of saving the lives of the people certainly it is looking like uh, a kind of a loot according to some allegations because administrative reforms are not being touched reforms in the uh, uh, rto offices and all uh, these are not touched these are heavily corrupted offices and many things they could have gone with but those things are not not decided those things are not announced and those things are untouched and the fines you decide about them you pass that law and after uh, uh, a few days this is all applicable means the 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 the, the most uh, uh, problematic crimes they are going on and they cannot decide about those cases and uh, uh, many many problematic things are there there is no accountability on those things there is no uh, hurry of implementation but here when you are about to collect the money from the common people so much hurry so that's why these things raise many many questions and uh, uh, is it going to help the help the public then the answer is a big no because they needed sincerity they needed implementation they needed passion uh, in implementing those laws and laws were there earlier also fines were there earlier also but the passion was not there the implementation was not there now you raise the fine 10 times 15 times 20 times and just after the passing of this act you uh, collected so much passion here and uh, you are uh, just collecting heavy uh, amounts of uh, uh, money in these challenge uh, uh, and all so these things are extreme pressures on common public many many issues we have seen in the past where common public was uh, uh, having a lot of issues and the allegations of harassment by the authorities were there whether we talk about uh, the demonetization the gst implementation and all these things so people consistently are having issues and the uh, results are in front of us means they are gonna collect uh, thousands of crores of rupees with that what they are going to do with that they are not telling us means that announcement is not there but they say that we want to discipline people we want to save the lives but there are important steps that they had to take if they wanted to save the lives but those things are not done but the collection is a reality here states they are also having some problems because you see schedule 7 is there and uh, uh, the union list state list and concurrent lists are there this is the act under concurrent list where states and parliament they both can make laws so gujarat has announced a substantial reduction in the fines because it is there in the concurrent list so states are allowed to do that but you see uh, uh, central government would wish that all uh, states uh, follow this thing but you see it's a huge burden on public so that's why politically these things may be fatal so uh, they are uh, discussing those things madhya pradesh west bengal they are not gonna implement that as according to their uh, uh, recent announcements and karnataka kerala they are studying the prospects to make the provisions less stringent because the penalties are too much and a lot of outrage is there uh, among the public regarding these issues you see in a country like india where uh, uh, half of the red lights are not working and uh, vip culture vc police people they uh, do not uh, follow these norms most of the times they do not wear helmets they uh, uh, are uh, they are not uh, uh, riding with the seat belts and all so these things are visible to common public and the vip culture at the most we where no rules are followed and regarding the rallies and all recently a political party was there where uh, hundreds of motorcycles uh, were there and uh, nobody was wearing a helmet no rules no nothing no red light nothing so these kind of things are visible by public and that's why people see a lot of hypocrisy in those things 
and they say that uh, uh, these allegations are true that uh, it's a kind of a loot that they are doing because the burden on the public when it becomes true and uh, 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 the, the channel chalans that they are uh, paying it's a problematic thing for the public because public is very much uh, set in a way that uh, uh, normally they do not follow all the rules so that's why a lot of outrage is there and that thing that thing is wrong because discipline is must and the passion in the authorities is must means the, the passion the kind of fashion they are showing today that should have been there always every day and uh, 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 when you talk about the chalans then uh, 500 to 1000 rupees chalan that was also huge for the normal public and when that was applicable and if you have you would have showed that kind of passion there then people would have disciplined by now but today you raise that 10 15 20 times and then you show the passion to collect the money then people understand these kind of things so that's why uh, the problem is there and the accountability must be there means what we are going to do with that money and you are not uh, touching the administrative reforms and uh, a lot of uh, uh, determinants can be there and you are not talking about those things and here you are citing that uh, we are uh, saving the people from these deaths then there are multiple reasons for that and there are uh, uh, serious issues there that you are not discussing actually and those are must to address the problem of accidental deaths in this country so only the fines will not do okay that's the issue and uh, where earlier bill was there that that got last last time where the electronic delivery of rto services was the provision but now they have not touched this thing and this is a major corruption area means the rt offices regional transport authorities they are uh, uh, one of the most corrupt bodies there so there some reforms were needed but those things uh, again were not touched so that's why they need to make some changes here and uh, uh, the amended law the section 198a where the requirement of a designated authority contractor consultant and the concessionaire who are responsible for all these uh, design and uh, maintenance safety standards those things are mentioned that is the main reform area here and there a lot of things are very much stringent and uh, those are uh, uh, followed passionately now so it has become a huge issue okay so some changes are needed people will certainly go to courts here because uh, uh, things are too huge and uh, here there are many many areas which can be countered because the reasons that they are citing those can be handled very well in the court many many issues are there and the condition of roads traffic signals signages and cautionary remarks uh, uh, these uh, markings uh, sorry which affect motorists cyclists and pedestrians they are in a problematic situation today so those changes those reforms are not happening and the uh, challenges are like uh, 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 they are uh, at the peak so these are issues okay next mr modi launched a pension scheme you see both for uh, uh, farmers and for uh, small businessmen mandan yojana these this is a pension scheme and 18 to 40 age group is allowed means it's a pension scheme after 60 the 3000 rupees the pension will be paid so 18 to 40 age group is allowed here and uh, a new assembly for jharkhand at kutegram that was also inaugurated it's the first paperless assembly in the country and a important cargo terminal in jharkhand in sahib ganj that was also inaugurated you see the inland waterways authority of india on river ganga uh, they have uh, built this important uh, facility there it's a modern facility uh, 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 cargo terminal and uh, this is on a national waterway one we all know about that Allahabad to haldia uh, this uh, waterway one is going on and that's a very important one we are expecting a lot uh, from these developments so this is important next net grid national intelligence grid net grid they want to link social media accounts to the huge database of records related to immigration entry and ex exit banking telephone details everything so this can be a new addition where allegations are there that uh, india is being created as a snoop uh, uh, as a surveillance state it started with the Aadhaar issue 
and uh, after that 10 central agencies like raw intelligence bureau and all they were allowed to barge into any kind of uh, uh, internet connected computer in this country and they can get they can, they can decode any kind of information in those computers so a lot of allegations were there a lot of problems were raised with those announcements but those things are going on you see maybe we are not discussing today those uh, things but uh, things are going on and now netgrid said that uh, there must be a central database uh, which is uh, linked to these social media accounts and other important services accounts so that will certainly restrict some issues and the privacy issues are uh, gonna come this is not an announcement this is a kind of a proposal and the wish of a net grid so government is discussing these things and uh, let's see what kind of announcement will be there and these things are going on for some uh, some uh, uh, years now because india lacks a robust cyber law and the leakages can be a very uh, uh, practical possibility so there many issues are there means we have seen that facebook has misused the data data leakages were there with yahoo company and here in india there is no cyber law there is no uh, uh, specific uh, uh, institutional mechanism then uh, how we can be sure about these datas that they will be totally secured and biometric datas are there social media accounts will be there and many many private informations can be there if those things will be allowed there to, 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 to these uh, central databases and the robust cyber law is not there means nobody can guarantee these uh, securities so how these things can be possible so that is the real issue here so first thing that this country needs is a robust cyber law where all the protections are uh, there and the issue must be solved of the data localization norms means everything must be crystal clear in the laws no confusion no vague statements should not be there in those laws so that is the dire need today next IP index that is uh, uh, announced every month by central statistical office under ministry of uh, statistics and program implementation that gives a kind of a indicative data on a uh, on a, a monthly basis it is not a final data but uh, it's a kind of a good help every month and according to that after 10 months it's a kind of a increase in the retail infl inflation 10 months high of 3.21 percent it was 1.17 percent in june so uh, this is a good thing now and uh, you can see this trend you see the numbers are not important because every month these numbers are appearing in the PIB data but uh, the trend is important after a lot of months uh, the inflation is uh, uh, rising with some numbers so in this economic slowdown phase if the inflation is rising that that's uh, that's a good sign and mainly the FMCG sector that if is getting uh, some uh, growth there there then uh, it's a good thing for our economy at large okay so we will discuss all these things in the mcq lessons because uh, uh, important questions questions can be formed in these datas and uh, we will meet in the evening lesson here one more important issue the global reinvest it's a important renewable energy investors expo and this is going to be third one next and it was uh, 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 about to be held in october 2019 but they have postponed it and next year in october 2020 they are gonna organize this and this is the flagship expo of a ministry of a new and a renewable energy they call it reinvest and it is uh, based on this issue of uh, renewable energy targets and our steps regarding climate change and all these uh, important issues the main reason that they are citing here that is the ongoing slowdown in the economy coupled with subdued activity in the renewable energy sector also and uh, uh, many many issues are going on, going on so that's why this year it is not going to happen next year they are hoping that we will uh, organize this flagship investors meet and expo they call it reinvest and it is by ministry of new and renewable energy so important questions we may ask from that also so thanks a lot keep watching it was amit Sani, and uh, uh, we will meet again tomorrow and in the evening mcq lesson